Thanks for having me, Matt. Sure. Uh, my name is Jim Westphalen. Uh, my film is called Vanish, Disappearing Icons of a Rural America. Um, I've, so I, I will, I'll be the fan guy for a moment, long time admirer of your oh, work. Thank I've, you. I've lived here in Middlebury for, for 20 years, and so I've seen your, your exhibits um, in the galleries and, and Vermont Folk Life Center. Um, I, in addition to the, the 20 years I've spent uh, in Addison County, I grew up in, in a similar town, similar county in Virginia, rural, rural oh, okay. southwestern Virginia. So you get in it. Rockbridge County. So I get it. Okay. I, I get it. Um, and I'm fascinated by, by your subject, um, but also equally by the process. And so I, I would love to to talk about how the, the point where you thought being a um, lifelong uh, fine arts photographer documenting, uh, documenting these landscapes where did the idea for then taking this to to a film? Where, where did that come from? Well, you know, my my initial um, my initial mission was to capture the beauty of these failing and fading structures. Um, but then, as I started digging deeper and chatting with the people who either owned these structures mm -hmm. or had some connection to them, uh, these all these rich stories right. and histories came up, and it's wonderful to hear them firsthand. So if I had an exhibition, um, I would, uh, I'd have some type of a placard with a blurb that would describe what it was. But I found invariably um, it was just not enough, not enough for me to right. really convey. So that's how it was sort of born out of the frustration of, um, I want to get these stories out there. Yes, there's this visual beauty, right. but there's also these really wonderful, um, and just meaningful stories to tell about the history. And it, it, it's captured right away in the trailer. Um, one of the, the places in Vermont, it's, it's not only um, capturing what remains, but there's a whole story behind what's not there anymore. Exactly. Um, and the, the context of what we are seeing and the stories behind that. So yes. I, I can instantly understand how, you know, you would have this great image and tell what you could in an abstract but it still leaves so much. It so does, much more. yeah. Um, so you, you decide, I, when you realize that there's this um, rich perspective to, to offer, I'm imagining, though, it wasn't just as simple as, okay, I'm, I'm a filmmaker now. No, I mean, no, so no. How, did, how did you then go from, I want to tell this yeah. on film, to actually starting to do it? It was a daunting uh, thought right. from, from the start. Um, but I was fortunate enough, um, I have a one full-time employee who okay. has a film background okay. and two part-timers that when I was still doing commercial photography, they both have multimedia and film backgrounds. So I got the team together and I said, here's my thought, yeah. you know, can the four of us on a shoestring do this? And uh, it was, a, you know, it was a, it was a fun process, but certainly a steep learning curve for me sure. uh, to translate, okay, here's, you know, I'm a still photographer, I right. can capture this image which tells a story, right. but uh, in very simple terms, now we have a moving picture and right. a moving story. Right. How do I get from point A to point B? Right. Um, so I had to think in moving terms instead of still terms. But still taking the still photography, so how, does, how did your brain toggle? back and forth? Um, it actually worked to my advantage, I okay. think, in that, you know, as a visual artist, all those elements, you know, you have the base elements. Right. It's about composition, it's right. about light, um, and it's about, you know, how do you want to tell the story, whether it be still or moving. So you take those elements yeah. um, and they, um, you know, they transferred very nicely from still because I wanted, you know, I wanted in the film for every moment to be this beautiful little vignette as right. it would be a still. And I found that was a lot easier said than done. Of course. Uh, but, um, you know, I, I think there are, you know, successful parts within the film that right. we have those. And then, of course, I sort of laced the film with some of those still images that I, you know, was sort of the, uh, the end game. Right. Here's the finished, uh, the so finished you're seeing the making, the making of the yes. portrait. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, and I like that you call it a portrait. Yes. Because, you know, a portrait is, you know, a picture of this life. Right. And, uh, and all these structures have these lives. Their lives. It's, it, well, and that's, I'm also <coughs> thinking of them, these structures as subjects. And so how, did, sure. how did you find, one, once you started to venture beyond where you lived, um, how did you find new subjects as you started to venture across, across the country? You know, it's a combination of things. Um, 
you know, Google Earth is a beautiful thing. Yeah. You know, you go out to uh, any area of the country and you can poke around that way. But a lot of it is um, just doing a lot of searches on, you know, old abandoned, you know, structures or schoolhouses or prairie churches. And, and so when I went out west, right. um, you know, I had to have some sort of uh, plan and goal. Okay, I know I know of these five structures that are right. within 300 miles of each other. Um, you know, I've done enough research uh, and found that out. And I've all I also called historical societies, okay. county offices, you know, town clerks, and that kind of thing. And you know, it's it's a lot of sort of detective work that goes into it beforehand. But ultimately, as I allude to in the film, it's you know, it's boots on the ground. It's, right. it's getting there doing the driving. It was great that I had a handful of subjects when I went out to Montana. I had a handful of subjects already chosen, right. and um, but it was the gems in between. That's what I was going to say. How, how much <coughs> time and space did you allow for serendipity for what you discovered driving from one yeah. place to the next? Well, <coughs> my first trip out west, um, I was out there for 11 days. And I figured with just the structures that I had pegged for, you know, for me to go visit, right. I might need four days. Right. So, you know, I left plenty of breathing room there. And it's also the breathing room is left because invariably, the first time you go to see, you know, a, a subject, a structure, um, you know, the chances of the light being perfect. What you, what you need. What I, and what I envision is just, you know, is, is pretty slim. Right. So, you know, I would visit a structure one day and then I might come back three days later when I see the forecast. It's okay. a little bit more conducive to the way I see picturing it. Got it. But um, it's, it's a lot more difficult out there because I say, I'll come back three days later. Well, that right. might be 120 miles away. Right. Because everything, I chose the prairie of Montana. Right. Everything is so vast <laughs> and spread out. It really is, you know, big sky as they call it. Right. <coughs> um, well, that leads perfectly into my ne next question. <coughs> uh, uh, geography changes, landscapes change, industry from that era changes, yeah. but what's not changing is time. Right. And, and that's, you know, the sands in that hourglass are, are, um, are dropping away. Um, you, you, you say it so perfectly that it is a race against time to capture, yeah. capture these before it's too late. Um, have there been any places where you have felt like, I wish I was here 10 oh, years so, ago. So many places, yeah. so many places. And um, specifically, uh, most recently on the East Coast here, um, I spend a lot of free time in Maine. Mm -hmm. um, I love the coast of Maine. Yep. And uh, I have a dear painter friend who passed away last year, but 30, 40 years ago, he was painting very similar scenes and very similar structures to what I photograph. Mm -hmm. And we had become good friends. And uh, a year ago, I went down east in Maine as far as I could because I really wanted to capture that vernacular, the old fish houses right. and the, uh, the smoke houses and herring sheds and those type things. And I figured, well, if I go as far down east as possible, um, I'll find some of that. Yeah. And the fact is, I'm too late. I go, I'm 30 years too late. Yeah. Um, and you know, I found some great interesting structures and right. subjects. but. A lot of that is is gone, and and I'll just add to that also that <clears throat> many times I'll go see a structure, and I'll put it, you know, I'll take a snapshot on my iPhone, put it in my log. Okay, this has got to be shot next fall. You know, right. this type of light. I might go back next time, and it's gone. It's gone. You know, that has happened many times. I would imagine, you know, we we were <coughs> mentioning. Um, you know, my, my personal experience in rural communities, there's a great storytelling tradition in a lot of, a lot of places. Um, uh, not, uh, it, not unique to, to rural areas, but, but certainly when it comes to place and, and structures, oh, that's the old fill in the blank. Um, and it might not be first or even second hand knowledge of a place, but something that someone, you know, an elderly person's grandfather um, talk to them. Are, are you, right. Have you found that, you know, multi-generation? For sure. Yeah. For sure. Um, you know, it's, those are, to me, the best encounters right. where um, I might talk to somebody, I might be driving down a road and say, hey, I heard about this old coal shed in this area. Can you right. tell me about it? And they might know where it is and tell me about it, but they say, you know, 
My great grandfather, though, he homesteaded, mm. you know, just a mile past, and you'll see there's still a corn crib left, there's wow. still an ice house, those kind of things. So, those are the things I feel so fortunate to be able to do. Right. You know, those you know those road trips where I encounter those uh, those great vignettes of life that you know I just that'll always be with me. And yeah. and how do they, how do the people react to you coming to their community wanting to capture this history of theirs? Most most times it's. Um, you know, almost without exception, they uh, they're excited. Right. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. I'd love to tell you the story. Or there's this this old barn down the road. Um, here in Vermont is very interesting mm. because so often, you know, I'll I'll see a structure that I want to photograph. Maybe it is a big old barn or something. Right. And I always make a point of trying to get a permission first. I'll knock right. on a door. I'll knock on a door. Somebody will open up and say to me. Um, you know, they kind of look at me always a little bit right. suspiciously at first. I give them my spiel, you know, you got that, uh, the elevator pitch and you right. get the five seconds. But they'll look at me kind of cross-eyed and say, you want to take pictures right. of my old barn or right. my old farmhouse? Like, right. what? And if I explain to them, uh, nine times out of ten, they're like, oh, okay, yeah. I get it. This is great. Yeah, this is nice. great. And they're on board. Nice. Yeah. Well, thank you. Um, I, I guess, you know, I, I've been saying to everyone I've, I've talked to, I don't want to take you out of the now. You should, you should be living with this film and, yeah. and enjoying it and experiencing it. But, but having now this opportunity to take your still photography work and work in tandem with moving pictures, do you have other, other projects in mind um, where that uh, symbiosis uh, would, would be similarly productive for you? Um, maybe loosely. Okay. And when I was in the thick of it, the editing, you know, this was yeah. four years in the making of right. this film. <clears throat> At one point, I said, "Never again." <laughs> yeah, you know, it's just <laughs> everyone has this that. Is, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. Yeah. But um, you know, now I'm on the other side. Right. I want to say, "Never say never." Right. So for the time being, um, I love that. I, uh, you know, I put this project, the film project, to bed, and right. I'm having fun promoting it. Yeah. But I need to get back to what I do. Bet, get out there. You know, get yeah. out there, yeah. and uh, I have other areas of the country that I want to travel to, and uh, because time's ticking. Yeah. Right. Well, thank you. Uh, oh, thank you so much, and thanks for sharing. My Again, pleasure. you've been so generous to this community already uh, in sharing your your work. But it's great to have your film here too. Well, I appreciate that. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, thanks so Jim. much. Yeah.